So this is one of the fundamental items that you observe on the face of a published financial statement of an entity. So if you take the financial statement of every company that is published, maybe if you go to the bank, you can check it. You will see that in their income statement below it, you will see they have calculated the earnings per share and they put it there. So what is the idea about the earnings per share? It is simply how much profit that is attributable to the shareholders of what? The company. In other words, earnings per share simply equals profit attributable to equity shareholders divided by weights. What is Wayne's weighted average number of equity shares? So that is the idea about earnings per share. There is a difference between earnings per share and his junior brother dividend per share. What is dividend per share? Earnings per share, dividend per share. What's the difference? Are they the same or are there are they different? Are they different? They are, they are not different. Okay, you better say they are not different. Or oh, you said they are. There is a difference. <laughs> what do you think, Judy? No idea. Are different? <laughs> you are not sure about it. Okay. Any spare share is when we share the profit of the company, what everybody is supposed to get. But dividend per share is how much dividend that everybody will actually get. So dividend per share is dividend payable, and we are not going to spend time on that here, no. Divided by the weighted average number of equity shares, or divided by the number of shares in the company. Now, so what does that mean? What does that mean? Always, the earnings per share is greater than the dividend per share. Do you agree, or will you agree? Why? Because it is not all profit made that are paid as what? Dividend. Some of the profit will be retained. So for instance, the company may make a profit of 20 million, but it means when we are calculating earnings per share, it will be, and the company has 10 million shares, then the earnings per share will be that everybody will get $2. But when we make a profit of 20 million, we can't give all of them to the shareholders. We will say we may retain, say, 80% of this figure. So when we are retaining about 80% of this figure, then it will be left in somewhere like maybe $2 million. And so that $2 million becomes what? The dividend payable. So all the time, and the same 10 million, so all the time you realize that the dividend payable is going to be less than what? The earnings that the company makes. That is the idea about dividend per share and earnings per share. But under this standard, we are not talking about dividend per share. We just be focusing on the earnings per share. So when we talk about profits attributable to equity shareholders, what do we mean? It means profits after tax, non-controlling interest, and preferred shareholders. So after we have paid tax, after we have paid non-controlling interest and also preference shareholders, how much money that will be left to the real owners, that is why we use the word equity shareholders, they are the real owners of the business, is what refers to as profit attributable to equity shareholders. about right issue, sorry, uh, earnings per share, we are going to be dealing with what we call the weighted average number of equity shares. What is the weighted average number of equity shares? It is simply the number of shares that is outstanding as at the end of the year. The number of shares that is outstanding as at the end of the year, taking into consideration various adjustments possible. The number of shares that is outstanding as at the end of the year, taking into consideration various adjustments. Now, if we 
are talking about the shares outstanding as at the end of the year, meaning there is going to be changes to the share capital of the company from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. What are some of the ways through which these changes can occur? One, the changes can occur when there is issue of shares at full market price. What does that mean? It means during the year, the company issues what? Some additional shares. But if the company issues some additional shares, as at the end of the year, what will be the weighted average number of shares? If we issue shares at a full market price, then the weighted average number of equity shares is going to be equal to the original shares that were there before the issues. So original shares plus the number of shares issues or number of new shares, but taking into consideration, I'm writing too much English here, taking into consideration period or time. What does that mean? Let me give you an illustration to explain that. For instance, as at 1st Jane 20X5, Limpin Limited, had 20 million one dollar shares. During or on 1st July, or let's say on 1st August 20X5, it issued 10 million shares. Calculate weighted average number of equity shares. So this is what we are talking about. So if this is a question, what would you say is the number of equity shares as at the end of the year? As at 31st, this 20x5. What will we get? The original shares by the number of what? New shares. But I put into bracket, taking into consideration what? The time period, or the period or the time. So what does that mean here? If you just uh, pick the 20 and add it to 30 as the number of shares outstanding, you are wrong. So how do you go about it? Because you need to take into consideration the timing. What is the timing? It means to get a solution to this question, the weighted average number of equity shares is going to be the shares that was outstanding, the 20 million shares, plus how many that was issued? 10 million. But when was it issued? 1st August. So from 1st August to 31st December, how many months has the share been in existence? Five. Five months. Are you sure? August, September, October, November, December. Okay. So it will be times five over 12. That is what I mean by taking into consideration the period or the timing. So we will look at how long has the share been in existence before the end of the year. That is why it is called weighted average. Weighted average. So not just that we have issued shares, but how long has that share been in existence to the year ended of the company? So in that case, we'll have 20 million. Can I have an answer for this? So it will become what? 24.2 million. So when you say 30 million, what is it? That is what happens when a company issues shares at full market price. Second scenario. There could be a change to the share capital of the company, but that could result from what we call bonus issue. This was, yes, certainly for cash. So this is for cash because people are going to pay us what? Money. Bonus issue. This is one of the things many of the financial institutions did to meet the minimum capital requirement. Bonus issue. 
So what is bonus issue? It is simply the issue of free shares to the shareholders of the company. Free shares, out of reserves. So it is the issue of shares, or free shares to the shareholders of the company from what? The reserves. So the double entry here is simple. We're going to be debiting our reserves. Normally, it could be reserves or share premium. So share premium or reserves. We will debit that. Then we will credit the stated capital. So this is how many of the banks in Ghana met the minimum capital requirement. They were having a lot of reserves. So all they did was to transfer the reserves into stated capital. Now, in order to do that, it means you are going to be issuing free shares to the shareholders of the company. This is not bringing us any money, but it is going to change what? The capital structure of the company. When there is a bonus issue with this one, we don't take into consideration what? Um, the timing period. We just issue that, and I'll come back to that after or later on in our discussion. The third scenario that could result into change in the share capital is what we call right issue. Now, let me emphasize here that the issue of shares at the full market price is usually something like a public issue. So you are issuing the shares to the public to subscribe to the shares. But the right issue has to do with issuing of new shares to existing shareholders in proportion of their current ownership. Issuing of new shares to existing shareholders in proportion of their current ownership or number of shares outstanding. That is the idea about right issues. So the idea is about just to existing shareholders. So many of the banks also did this. In proportion of the current ownership or number of shares held by the shareholders. Held by the shareholders. Now, everything you are seeing so far is going to lead us into what we call basic earnings per share. I will come back to that in a moment. But there are also two scenarios that can cause a change to the stated capital, but these ones are hypothetical. You see, with a full issue, the thing has occurred. With bonus issue, the thing has occurred. With right issue, the thing has occurred. And we are calculating EPS from the angle. But there are two other issues that the thing has not occurred, but we are going to assume that it has occurred. The first one is called issue of convertible loans. Issue of convertible loan. What are convertible loans? These are loans that can be converted to what? Shares upon redemption by the holders. So loans that can be converted into equity shares upon conversion. Sorry, upon redemption. So at the date of redemption, you can decide that, okay, I'm not going to redeem this share. I'm not going to redeem this loan, but give me what? Shares in the company. Now, this is, when we are calculating earnings per share, this thing will lead us into what we call diluted earnings per share. Meaning, we are going to assume that even though the loan can be converted in 10 years' time, we will assume that they are converting it today. So if they are converting it today, what would have been the effect on the stated capital of the company? That is why we say this is hypothetical. It hasn't occurred, but we are going to assume that it's occurring. Now, why would we do this thing? So that we will inform the current shareholders of the company that 
Something like this is likely to happen in the future. So if today you are receiving an earnings and you are happy, wait till the people convert their shares and the share increases and your earnings falls. That is the idea about the issue of convertible. Then the last one is share options. Share options. Now, share option is actually something we will be looking at later on when you are doing corporate reporting under IFRS 2, share based payments. Share options are like bonus packages given to management of the company or employees of the company to continue to work in the company. In other words, if you continue to work in our company in the next five years, we will give you an option to buy 20 million shares in the company. It is called share options. Now, have they bought their shares yet? No. Would they buy? We don't even know. But we are going to assume that they have bought their shares today. And what will be that change to the stated capital of the company? So this is also hypothetical, and that is also going to lead us to what we call diluted earnings and shares. So these are the five scenarios that are going to result into a change to the share capital of the company. The first three are basic. They are what has happened. But the last two are diluted what is likely to happen in the future? Any question so far? If the person is an employee but uh, he's not paying for the shit, that one will call an employee. No. What would it call an Where the employee is not for the share. So we are just giving them some free shares. If you are giving them free shares, then certainly it will be a bonus issue. Right? To be a bonus. But with a share option, it's not a free share. They will pay something, but it will be below the market price of their shares of the company. Now, so it is based on these five scenarios that we are going to have what we call kinds all types of earnings per share. So two things, I've already mentioned them. Basic earnings per share and then diluted earnings per share. Under the basic, the basic is the same as the actual earnings per share and then the diluted is the supposed or the hypothetical earnings per share. So under the basic, we will have at full price, as I mentioned in the first one. Two, we will have bonus issue. Three, we will have right issue. Then under the diluted, we're going to have convertible loans. And then share options. So, earnings per share is about going through each of these five things and calculating the earnings per share under each of these scenarios. I think I printed some questions. So, with the basic earnings per share at full price, you know that your earnings per share is going to be your profit after tax or profit attributable to equity shareholders divided by the weighted average number of shares. Now, under the basic earnings per share, the profit after tax, there will be no change to it. It will be the same figure we're going to be using, but the weighted average number of shares is going to what? Change. That is why we will have to calculate it. So, in that scenario, how do we calculate the weighted average number of equity shares? So let's take a scenario and look at how we go about it. So we're going to put year here, put share issued here, have own share 
اون چه اخوات یه and then you have shares outstanding so three columns Jane 2011 we had 2,300 1,007 1st March 2011 we issued 800 and so it will shoot to 2,500 then on 1st December 2011 we bought 250 shares so we left the 2250 so at the end of the day we're going to have they sold the boat. Where? They sold the shares, right? Where? Which column are you talking about? The me. The me. Yeah. They issued. Mm -hmm. So you add it to the outstanding and get this. So let's go. How we solve this question. Remember I told you that at full market price, we are going to take into consideration the timing period. So what do we do? We are going to put the period down. Then we will put the shares outstanding in the middle. And then we will put the number of months that the shares were outstanding. So follow me carefully. First is January. As of January, 1st January 2011, how many shares were outstanding? 1,007. What happened during the year? On 1st May, they issued additional shares. So the question is, the question is this. This 1007, how long was it there during the year? So January, February, March, April, because this is first May. So how many months? Four months. Follow the picture well. So this 1007 was there for four months before a change in capital came in. Then on first May, the company issued 800 shares, so from 1st May 2011, the outstanding shares became 2,500. When again did there, was there a change in the capital? 1st December. So from 1st May to 31st November, how many months would that be? Seven months. Then on 1st December, the shares outstanding were 2,250. How many months was that there? One month. So this is the idea. Now, so from this, we can now calculate the weighted average number of equity shares. So the weighted average number of equity shares will now be equal to this figure, 1,700 times 4 over 12, bracket close, plus 2,500 times what? 7 over 12, bracket close, plus the last one, 2,250 times 1 over 12, bracket close. In the event of that, you can punch all and give me final answer. 
Okay, you give me once you are punching this by piece. What did you get here? Five, six, seven. Five, six, seven. So when we sum it up, two two. So that's the weighted average number of shares. So what do we do? We now calculate the EPS. So what will our earnings per share be? Earnings per share, we are told the profit for the year was what? 43. So 43 million divided by the weighted average number of shares, 2213. So what do we have? Now, the answer will always be in the smallest unit of the currency, so we always multiply it by 100. Please note that. Earnings per share will have to always be in the smallest unit of the currency. So we always multiply it by 100. So when we divide, what do we get? 1.94. I'll multiply by Okay. 1.94 cents. So that's the idea about that. So that's how we calculate the earnings per share when the risk and issue at full price. So under every scenario, the weighted average cost of capital calculation is going to be subject to change. But that is what we do under full price. Now with bonus issue, we've mentioned that the number of parents. So under bonus issue, our weighted average number of equity shares is going to be the original share plus the new shares under the bonus issue. Remember, we are not going to take into consideration the number of pairs. So let's look at an illustration quickly on that. Profit after tax for 2010, we have in millions here, 180. Then profit after tax for 2011. So this is a question. 225 million. Then shares outstanding is 660 or 600 million. Then the company undertakes a bonus issue of 2 ordinary shares. for each ordinary shares outstanding. So, required. We calculate earnings per share. So what are we seeing here? We are giving the profit for 2010, profit for 2011. We are giving the ordinary shares to be $600.
And we are told that there is a bonus issue for what? Two for every what? One. So how do we calculate EPS here? First, we will have to calculate our weighted average number of equity shares. And remember what I said. It is the original shares, which is what? Our 600 plus the shares issued under the what? Bonus issue. How many shares do you think will be issued under the bonus issue? We are giving you two shares for each of the shares outstanding. So how many shares is outstanding? 600. So you will get two, twice of that. Hence, we are going to be issuing 1,200. Meaning, in totality, we are going to be getting what? 600, sorry, 1,800 shares. So you realize that here, we are not taking into consideration the timing period. That's the difference you need to understand. We are not taking into consideration the timing period. Now, so once we have our weight, we can calculate EPS first for 2010 to say it should be 180 mil over 1,800 mil times 100. What do I have? Then look at EPS for 2011. That will be 225 mil over 1,800 mil times 100. Now, as you can see, it was 10 cents, but now it will be what? 12.5 cents. If you do the workings, you realize that there is a growth of about what? 25% in the earnings per share of the company. So this is how we calculate EPS under bonus issue. So note how the workings is being done under bono free uh, full market or full price and then how it's being done under <coughs> bonus issue. <coughs> so let's move to the third. Right issue. And that one too is different. Then because all of these are under basic what? And it's per share. So let's go to the third one. Right issue. Now we write issues. What happens is that we said it is the issue of shares to existing shareholders at a price lower than the current what? share value. So with a right issue, when there is a right issue, what happens is that the number of shares of the company increases, but the market value of the share of the company falls. The market value of the share of the company falling is actually a theoretical market value. What does that mean? It means the fact that you are doing a right issue does not mean your actual market price will fall. But based on theory, your market price will fall. Because of this, when we are doing right issue and using that to calculate the EPS, we need to calculate what we call the bonus fraction. What is the bonus fraction? The bonus fraction is simply the cum right price divided by the theoretical X price. 
X right price. That's what we mean by the bonus fraction. Now, what does that mean? The cool right price is the current share price of the company. So this will be given to you in the question. But the theoretical X price, you have to calculate it. So to be calculated. So the bonus fraction is the current share price of the company. The theoretical X right price is the new market value that you will be calculating under the right issue. When we finish this, I'll come back to how it is going to be calculated. But when we finish this, we have to find out the application of the bonus fraction. How do we apply the bonus fraction? Please note that the bonus fraction applies only to shares outstanding prior to the right issue. Very important. We apply the bonus fraction on or to the shares outstanding before the right issue. What does that mean? It means shares after the right issue after the right issues is not affected by the BF, the bonus fraction. These are principles and we are going to be using it to solve a question in a moment for you to understand what we are thinking or we are talking about. So let's look at an illustration on how we can actually solve a question of earnings per share using the right issue concept, taking into consideration everything that I have said here. So we are told that the company has outstanding shares of 500,000 shares and they made a right issue of one new share for what? Five outstanding shares. We are told that the exercise price is $5 per share and then the market value per share before the right issue was what? $11. So what do we do in this case? We need to know about the bonus fraction. What is the bonus fraction? The cum right price. And I told you that will be given. So the cum right price, I said, is the current price before the right issue. So what is the price before the right issue? The $11. So that $11 becomes what? The cum right price. Then we need to find the theoretical X price. But I told you that that would have to be calculated. So. Step one, calculating the theoretical X price. So how do we do that? This is also in financial management. We're going to put shares here. Then we'll put the value here. Currently, if we are holding, what was the right issue policy from the question? Five. For one new. So currently, if you are holding five shares, what is the market value per share? 11, isn't it? Yeah. So 5 by 11, $55. But the right issue will give you one new share at what price? $5 per share, and that is also 5. So total, 6. Total, 60. So the theoretical X price, which is also the new market value, will be the $60 over what? 6, and that will give you $10. Do you see what I told you here? That the market value will fall. So it is 11, but after the right issue, it has fallen to 10. But this is just a theory, not practical. So that is the first thing, theoretical X price. Now once we have calculated the theoretical X price, 
We go to the second step, calculating what? The bonus fraction. So what is the bonus fraction? The cum right price, $11 over. The theoretical, theoretical x right price, $10. Can we get an answer? Maybe 1.1. 1 .1. 1.1. So that is the bonus fraction. But listen to what I told you. I told you that the bonus fraction applies only to shares outstanding prior to the what? Right issue. So, before we get into calculating our weighted average number of equity shares, let's calculate the new shares issue. So what is the new shares issue? We are told 1 for 5. And there were 500,000 shares outstanding. So, new shares will be 1 over 5 times what? 500,000. And that will give us 100,000 shares. Am I right? 100,000 shares. Hence, the total shares after the right issue will be what? 600,000 shares. The 100 plus the Outstanding 500 making 600,000 shares. Now, how do we calculate the weighted average number of equity shares? When was the right issue made? First match. So, our weighted average number of equity shares will follow this order. One. Before, as at first May, how many shares were outstanding? The, the 500, okay? So it will be the 500,000 times, now, it means the share was there for Jane and what? Faith. So how many months? Two. So it's going to be two over 12 times the bonus fraction, 1.1. What do we get? Six, six, seven. seven. Listen carefully. Then I told you that the bonus fraction will not apply to the shares after the right issue. So let's be realistic and let me put 28 February here. So that from 1st May, sorry, 1st March to 31st December, how many shares were outstanding? 600,000. And this was there for 10 over 12. No bonus fraction. This was what I was saying about the application of the bonus fraction. So the bonus fraction only applies to the shares outstanding before the right issue. So after the right issue, the shares there, we don't apply the bonus fraction. So when I multiply, what do we get? Six point four two. 
So 6.4 cents. 6.4 cents. Now, what year is that? Ah, what year did I give you? 2011. 2011 no, do it 2010, 2012. 2011, 2010, 2011, sorry. So now this will be 2010. Then we will calculate EPS for 2011. And that will be, 40, is it 45,000? 45,000, right? Divided by the same answer, 591.667 times 100%. Seven point six cents. That's it. So this is what we mean by right issues under basic earnings per share. So at full price, look at how the workings was done. At bonus issue, look at how it was done. And then at right issue, look at how it is being done. In the question. The nature of the question will tell you which one you are supposed to do. When you, so when you get a right issue, you go with this approach. And especially the application of the bonus fraction. Very important. And how we calculate the theoretical x right price. Any questions? So if you have any questions, you put them in the comment box and I will answer all of them, whether you are watching on Facebook or you are watching on my YouTube channel. So I will answer all questions, you put them in the comment box. I'll see you in another lecture videos as we continue with uh, earnings per share for diluted.